Hey everyone, Jeff here, also known as the Revit Kid. Today I have a really neat parametric modeling tutorial for you in Revit. So if you're interested in parametric family creation, we're gonna be creating this really, really neat designed, um, we call it the Chippendale rail um, by the person who actually asked the question, but it's got a really, really uh, unique shape and design and something um, that you're not used to building every single day. So it was a really cool challenge. Um, the question actually was inspired by a member, uh, Jack Kennedy of uh, my private uh, BIM After Dark community. Anybody who's interested in the community, um, what, what it is is actually a, a, a site, a portal, um, where um, we have uh, members who, who are leveling up their skills in Revit. Um, we've got uh, a whole bunch of uh, uh, questions uh, that myself and other members answer. We have full-blown courses uh, such as BIM can make uh, can be sexy, which has to do with presentation materials, um, documentation, families, and and, uh, and DIY Dynamo. We also have. Um, private uh, office hours with myself and other members where we talk about um, questions and, and answer them in a Zoom call and so much more. So if you're interested, um, head on over to community.bimafterdark.com. I'll put a link in the description. But I wanted to jump into Jack's question here. Um, Jack uh, was tasked with modeling this this uh, <laughs> this interesting screened-in porch, <laughs> which uh, for what it's worth, it's uh, it's, it's something, this is existing condition. So, um, uh, but he was asked to model it. And so uh, he asked the community um, if they've ever done anything like this and and sort of uh, what, what you know, if there's anything that can help. Of course, every panel is a different size. So it has to be uh, parametric. So this was, uh, and as you can see, if I scroll through the discussion, we, we were uh, quite quite a few comments and, and discussion elements to try and work our way through getting to the result. And I thought this was a really cool example of, of not only uh, the power of, of the BIM After Dark community, but also um, to show just some really cool tricks for uh, parametric family creation that um, you don't really use every day because it's just not a shape that you use every single day. So let's jump into it. Um, I'm going to run through uh, the family. I'm going to show you it done and then sort of work backwards to show you how I accomplished it and my thought process through it. So hopefully it's valuable to you guys. I think it will be. And uh, I'm excited to. So let's let's jump right into Revit. And I will show you right away the the final the final project here. Uh, well, I shouldn't say project. This is a sample project, but uh, <laughs> uh, I kind of mocked this up in place to show you. So you can see here's here's the fa the panel there. Um, at the end of the day, we decided to go with a a curtain panel family. Um, reason being, uh, um, tested out railings, tested a whole bunch of stuff, and and this made the most sense, especially because it's flexible. So as you can see, if I was to take these grids and move them up, notice how these flex perfectly within it and same thing left and right so honestly the the family itself once once you figured out the geometry of it um it wasn't that challenging of a family to put together which was kind of cool i thought it was going to require quite a bit more um, um unique techniques and 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 skill sets as far as revit families are concerned but it's really actually um, um a pretty pretty simple family to create um as long as you're not going through the trial and error i went through in the beginning so uh, let's talk about that first um I was trying to figure out exactly what was the best category and family type to actually use for for this for this railing. So I actually started um, with a couple different things. I started with a uh, an adaptive component and then a pattern based family. And so if you can see here, um, this is sort of the adaptive component that I did. And you know this worked. I, I was able to get a shape that that flexed um, and and sort of did what I wanted. The problem was it wasn't practical in the fam in the project environment, right? Um, if you're using a, a, an adaptive component, you have to you have to place it um, on the object. So you have to click, 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 and then it adapts to the object. So you would have to do this all over the place, or you could place it on a pattern or a curtain system. But you'd have to create the curtain system, which you know, a, a curtain system itself, not a curtain wall, needs an object to to and a face to create. So the practicality of it wasn't wasn't really there. But this was not a fruitless effort. Uh, reason being, by by going through this process, I actually discovered something interesting about the design of of this um, of this system here, or the design of this of this railing. Um, you know, when I initially saw it, I I wanted to use um, adaptive components or the conceptual massing environment mainly because I could use divide lines. So if I look at this, uh, let's isolate one of these lines here. So I have um, I have reference lines, and then it's kind of hard to see, but if I zoom in, these are all divided. Let me highlight it there. They're all divided paths, right? So one, two, three, uh, one, two, three. And so when I looked at it, I was like, oh, this is a great opportunity to use divided paths. And so that was my first thinking. But then when I went through this process, I was looking at this, this, this uh, floor plan view, 
and hopefully you can see it on the recording. But if I was to if I was to draw a line, so I'm just going to draw a model line through here. So I just drew a model line through there. You'll notice that there's actually a, a grid system that comes into play. And so, so by doing this process, if I just copy these along here, you'll see that these points, they actually all hit at a grid system. And so that, that showed me without even realizing it, it's sort of the underlying, um, you know, the underlying part T of this, of this design. So if I copy along here and here and here, I don't I have to copy the whole thing, but you get the idea. So when you start looking at it, every one of these intersections is actually a grid system, right? So here's an intersection there, here's an intersection there, here's an intersection there. So when I saw that, I said, oh, this actually may not be that difficult of a family to build in the traditional family environment. And when we do that, then we can use things like a traditional curtain panel. Or my initial thought was, let's use a railing because that'd be kind of cool. But anyone who's ever tried to build a baluster and dealt with the angular stair stuff, it's just not worth the effort. <laughs> Plus the flexibility of the curtain panel was was pretty awesome. So so I said, all right, let's do that. Let's 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 go into the traditional family editor environment and and we will start with a curtain panel. And so here's the curtain panel family. So before I jump into to sort of breaking this down, I, I made a diagram that I think will help. Um, I nested this family. So instead of doing instead of going file new curtain panel family and just modeling this from scratch, I nested it into a curtain panel family for one reason, really, uh, 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 the only reason really, um, is because as I go in this family, you could see there's a lot of reference lines. <laughs> and then there's the EQ dimensions and a height and a width. So the, the actual makeup of this is pretty simple. It's, it's just a width with uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven reference planes equidistant, and then the same thing uh, uh, vertically. So I go here vertically, horizontal. So I could have done this in the in the um, in the curtain um, curtain panel environment, but then I, I just don't like having extraneous reference planes in that environment. So what I did is I made the height and the width a uh, instance parameters, and then I brought them in. So uh, we're going to do this from scratch, but I wanted to just just sort of analyze it so you guys get a sense of where I was coming from. So what I did is I actually created this diagram to sort of work through um, and show you the the nested family sort of setup. So as you can see on the left hand side, we have our curtain panel, um, or a curtain system, curtain wall, whatever you want to call it. And then it, within it is a curtain panel. So if I go to edit that, you know, edit type, um, there you have a curtain panel, which is really just um, a nested version of, of the generic model, which is, uh, you could see here uh, on the bottom. And then within that, there's a profile family. So the profile um, is actually driving the wood, uh, the thickness of the wood. Then we have a generic model that's driving the width and the height, and that's doing all the flexing. And then all of that is loaded into the curtain panel, which then gets loaded into the project. And I wanted to show that because sometimes it gets a little confusing when you're going through edit type, edit type, edit type, and, and you know nested families can be a challenge. And again, I could have done all of this generic model work in the curtain panel family template. I just like to keep it clean and curtain panels, if I bring it in, it just has a width and a height and you can snap those, it makes life so much easier. So let's jump in and let's get started. So I'm gonna to go to file, new, family, and I'm gonna start from the very beginning. I'm gonna start with a generic model, nothing else, just generic model. And I know some people may be saying, well, it's a generic model, it's not a curtain panel. When you load it in, it'll be a curtain panel, but you can also just, once you model it, you can convert this to a curtain panel so you have all the visibility settings. First thing I'm gonna do, I'm in my floor plan view. I'm just gonna draw reference planes, RP on my keyboard, one, two, so one, two, three, four. I'm gonna take these, I'm gonna select them, MM on my keyboard for mirror. I'm gonna mirror them. I'm going to dimension, DI on my keyboard. I'm going to hit equalize. So EQ is the little guy there. I'm actually going to change the scale so you guys can see it a little better. Okay, so this is, remember, this is my floor plan view. And then I'm going to hit DI on my keyboard. I'm going to add a dimension. And I'm going to give this a parameter. So I'm going to select the dimension, go to add parameter. And I'm going to say width. And I'm going to make this an instance parameter. Okay. Now I'm going to go to my front view or my elevation view. You can see here's all my reference planes. And I'm going to draw eight reference planes. So 
take this one and I'm going to copy it up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And DI on my keyboard. Dimension all eight of these. And then equalize them. We don't really care about the height uh, because, again, we are uh, going to bring this into project. Now I'm going to dimension the overall. I'm going to give this a, a, <clears throat> a, a parameter instance, and I'm going to call it height. So we have a grid and the grid flexes. So if I pull this up, all right, the grid flexes with it. Same thing in the, in the if I pull the width of this, all right, this flexes. Okay, and that's what we want. When it comes to handling uh, these, these, I don't want to call them angular parameters because they're really not. It's really a wire diagram that needs to align with things. There's a few approaches you can take, but one of the easiest approaches is actually using reference lines not reference pr planes, reference lines. And Revit does this thing with reference lines. If you draw them at intersections of other reference planes, um, they automatically constrain to it. I will put a disclaimer on it that um, the biggest thing you can do to help you when doing what I'm about to do now is um, flex the parameter or flex the reference planes um, every so often. Don't draw them all um, and then test it. Test it as you go along because the important part is when you're drawing these reference planes or reference lines, I apologize. When you're drawing these reference lines, making sure that they are um, uh, snapping to the right things. And I'll show you what that means in a second. So we're going to, if we go back to our initial um, plan, so you can see, if I go to my front view, you can see we're going to make this shape. We're going to make the X and then these, these three in the middle. Okay. So what I would suggest doing is doing a triangle at a time. Um, it made it easier and I, and and uh, to to comprehend as I was doing it, um, but also we have to do the X tier too. Um, and the reason I'm using reference lines as well is I'm going to use sweeps and I'm going to host them to the reference lines. So let's go to um, reference line up here under create. Okay, and then I'm just going to draw my reference lines like so. Now one thing you'll notice is. I didn't lock anything, but but if I move this reference plane, notice how the reference lines move with it. Okay, so now if I go back to create, do reference line, we're gonna do uh, we're gonna do the cross first. Which so one thing I did realize is if I went all the way through like this, um, it didn't always return the the result that I was looking for, um, so to speak. So uh, I did the triangle worked better, but for the sake of uh, time. Um, I'm going to do the cross, which it, it does work. It's just you got to pay more attention at the end. So I'm going to go from here to here to here. And then test it. See how the cross is still flexing with it. OK, so now we're going to draw the angular pieces. And if we look at our reference, you'll notice that essentially the angle pieces are every other piece on the grid here. Um, so one, two, three, and then they're, they're the intersections of the middle line. So when we're drawing that, it makes it a little easier to do. We just go in here, we go to create reference line, then we skip this one, start here, go to the intersection, skip that one, start there, go to the intersection, skip that one, start there, go to the intersection. Now, if I was to flex this, you'll notice those those angles are actually moving with it. Let me try this way. So see how it's moving with it. So now we just have to go around and draw them in each of these triangles. So I did that. You didn't have to watch me draw all the triangles. <laughs> I did the exact same thing around the entire um, uh, the entire uh, railing or baluster or curtain panel, I guess. And now you can see, right? I have these these model lines here. And then these model lines here. And now if I test it, remember I said you want to test it and flex it the whole time. If I move this up and down, you'll notice it's actually flexing with it. So by doing this, we've created a rig, you know, a wire framed rig that will actually um, let us sweep along it. And so that's the next step. So we have a rig that works. Remember, these are these are uh, these are instance parameters. So it's going to be pretty easy to just load this in and snap it to a, a curtain panel. We're actually going to create a profile family. And so if you look down here, I have one already loaded in here. If I open it, 
It's a really simple profile family. It has a width, a thickness, and an EQ. The reason I'm doing this is it'll give me the ability to to modify the width of this, uh, of all of the sweeps without manually drawing everything. And so the way you do this is pretty simple uh, from scratch, just so you can see, file new family. I'll go to profile. And then in here, I made this very simple. And you know, you could decide if you wanted to go center, top, left, right, corner, I, it doesn't really matter. I decided to do, I think, bottom. And reason being is I hosted everything around the bottom and then I trimmed the edges. Uh, it can get a little rough because you're, you're making multiple uh, uh, sweeps for each thing, but for the sake of argument, we're gonna use bottom. So I'm gonna quickly draw a reference plane, RP on my keyboard, select it, type MM on my keyboard to mirror it, RP on my keyboard again for reference plane. Then I'm just gonna uh, dimension it using DI on my keyboard. And then I dimension these two and equalize it. And then for here, I'm gonna give myself a width parameter and I'm gonna make those types. And then here I'm going to give myself a height parameter. And then all you have to do is draw a rectangle like so of lines and then lock them around the horn. And now we have this profile that is driven by a width and a height and it's going to be used for our sweeps. So I'm going to load that into my project and I'm actually just going to make sweeps for all these reference planes. So if I go in 3D, I actually, when I'm using reference, I'm sorry, reference lines, when I'm using reference lines, um, I like to do the sweeping in 3D. I think it's uh, easier to comprehend and you can see what you're doing and you don't accidentally click reference lines because you can't see those necessarily in 3D. Click create, sweep, and we're going to pick a path, okay? Depending on how you want to approach this, you could do one triangle at a time, you could do around. I think what I ended up doing was I went around first. So I'm just picking around the edges and clicking finish. Now when I go to uh, sweep, a lot of people may be used to going to edit profile or doing a sketch. If you pull this down, there's our wood profile right there. Now this is where it's important to understand how you want to um, manipulate the, the base point of this. You could see mine is kind of off. Um, so if I just rotate it 90 degrees, you can see it's going to the outside. Um, if I rotate it 270, it'll go on the inside or you could flip, whatever. Um, so now you can see I'm sweeping around and it's staying on the inside. And I click finish and there we go. Now remember, this is gonna move with those reference planes. So uh, it's exactly what we want. So now let's just make a couple more on the inside and then we'll jump over to a completed one. I'm gonna go to create, sweep, pick path. I'm gonna pick uh, this guy right here. I'm gonna click finish. I'm gonna apply a wood profile. Now here's where you have to decide. So notice it's in the middle, it's in the middle. So you're gonna to wanna to rotate it, but do you want it to be on top or bottom? Doesn't really matter, unless of course you want it to be the center. Uh, if you want it to be, all that matters is that whatever you decide on this one, they all need to be the same. So if we go to the top, then it all needs to be the top. So I'm just gonna rotate this guy uh, 90 degrees. So it's using the bottom as my, as my or the, the top as the guide and the bottom is sweeping. If I click finish here, You'll see, there we go. So I'm gonna create the same thing all over here and click finish, select my wood profile, rotate it 90 degrees, click finish, and so on and so forth. To the middle, all of these there, okay? So I'm gonna do that first and then I'll talk about what we're gonna do with all these extra pieces and, and, uh, and how we can clean this thing up. Okay, so I modeled all these sweeps. I'm gonna go to hidden lines so you can see it better. So in this example, I actually went up so they didn't extend over, but you notice there's some extensions there. So even if you did what we what I was doing before where these were rotated uh, by 90 degrees, so actually let's do it right now so I can show you. So even if they were rotated like this, I'll show you a little trick to clean them up. The first thing is you're gonna wanna join them all, right? So if I go to join geometry under modify, you're just gonna click here and you're gonna join. You can turn on multiple join if you want, click here and then click all the objects so that they're joining together real nice. Okay, so now you can see we've got them joined together. They're all driven by the reference planes. And if I look, I've got some of these extensions here. And maybe we, maybe you have them here if you followed the, the other example I was using. Well, that's a pain in the butt, right? But that's the nature of the fact that we needed to do multiple sweeps in order to use these model lines. So it's actually really easy to fix. All we have to do is create another sweep except we're gonna do a void sweep. 
So I'm going to create a void sweep under modify or create. And then I'm going to pick around my edges. Just like this. And then I'm going to click finish and I'm going to choose my same profile. I'm going to choose that same wood profile, except instead of being on the inside, I'm going to rotate it so it's on the outside. So notice how this now is on the outside. So if I click finish, it's going to void around the entire thing. And then it's going to cut and clean everything up. See that? All right. And now if I go to my front view, you'll see we have a nice clean. There's our void there. And now if I move this bad boy, you'll notice it's all flexing with it. Cool. All right. So we have a flexible family now. So to start, we started a generic model. We created our, our gridded uh, reference planes, right? Then we drew our model lines um, and we made sure that those model lines flex. That becomes kind of our skeleton. Um, then once we knew that those flex and they didn't break and they did everything we wanted, then we uh, created our profile family. We loaded that in. We swept along all of the model lines using that profile family. So we used create sweep. We joined them all and then we cleaned up around the edges. So now we have a fully flexible family. Okay. So next step is we need to use this thing in the project, right? And so right now, if I loaded this into the project, I would be able to just place it and stretch it, which is kind of cool, right? Um, but what we're going to do is we're actually just going to um, create it or load it into a curtain panel family. So then we can load into the project and actually use it as a curtain panel. We're going to go to file new family. We're going to click curtain wall panel and click open. The great thing about curtain wall panel is we don't have to worry about adding any parameters. Um, if you go to the exterior, I'll show you. They already have a reference plane that represents the top, one that represents the bottom, and one that represents left and right and the center. So all you're doing is placing this in and you're going to stretch it and call it a day. So let's load in our family now. So we just loaded in our family, it brought it into the plan view. I'm just going to place it right in the middle here. I'm going to align it to the center and lock it. So now it's nice and centered in our curtain panel. I'm going to go to my exterior view. You'll see there's our panel there. Remember we had instance parameters, so we have the ability to, to flex this thing. And I'm going to pull it to this side and lock it. Pull it to this side and lock it. And then pull it to the top and lock it. And there we go. Save this as a curtain panel, load into our project. And you have yourself a curtain panel. So if you don't know how to assign that curtain panel, it's pretty simple. I'll show you real quick. If we go to architecture wall, I'm just going to draw a quick curtain wall one, which everyone should be familiar with. So here's here's a curtain wall. Um, I'm just going to make add a couple grids in it for now. You can make a type too; it doesn't matter. If I tab and select any curtain panel, if I pull down, you'll notice here's my Chippendale panel. And there we go, right? If you want it to be built into the family itself, into the, the type, I should say, um, we can duplicate this and we'll call it uh, Chippendale type, chip type. <laughs> and right here, we can say we want every panel to be our Chippendale panel right there. Click OK. And now every panel is going to be that. So now we have this fully flexible curtain panel family that you can do with what you please. So there you have it. Kind of a cool one. Um, I hope that was helpful. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. If you're interested in the community, check it out at community.bimafterdark.com. And if you love the content here on this channel, make sure you subscribe on YouTube, hit the like button, and uh, I'll talk to you guys soon. Thanks.